Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers. This is part 44. Machining the connecting rod in the lathe using a four jaw chuck. This series called How to Build a Model Steam Engine is for my Patreon supporters only. The full length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. Why is it a good idea to join Patreon? Firstly, you get to see the videos a few months before everyone else. You can download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. This compilation video contains edited extracts from my series How to Build a Model Steam Engine. These are taken from part 31 of the series. The connecting rod blank is now in the four jaw chuck, the holes have been drilled, and now you can see why I put a cross on the end of the piece of metal. It's to help me centralise it in the four jaw chuck, because I need to drill a hole here with a centre drill. I didn't drill it quite deep enough, but it's not a problem with a live centre, you can just use a hole in the end if you wish. Maybe not on large parts, but it's fine for this job. After drilling the centre hole, I removed the part from the chuck and applied lots of marking out blue to it. This stage of the process is critical, the marking out has to be accurate, or at least in the right place. I've scribed the shape of the fork onto the metal at the correct end on the correct side. It's quite easy to get confused when you do this job. This will be the part that is outermost from the chuck, so when I trim the end to size and mill the fork in the next episode, the centre hole will no longer be visible. Over now to the lathe, it's pulled out to the full extent from the chuck, the life centre supporting the far end, and I'm initially using my normal carbide tip tool to take the roughing cuts. To get through this sequence, which takes quite a long time, I will be speeding up the video to 400%. Some viewers may like to watch turning operations, but for me there's a limit before it gets very tedious and boring. I'm keeping a close eye on the lines that are scribed for the shape of the fork, because the angle of the rear of this cutting tool is quite steep. I'm taking as deep a cut as I can without the machine slowing down. This connecting rod needs to be machined with a fish belly shape. Why is that, I hear you ask? How come the rod needs to be thicker in the middle than it is at the ends? The answer to this is obvious when you think about it. Have a look at connecting rods and various rods on full-size engines that are very long. When I built my miniature railway around the other house many years ago, the steel for the rails, which was half inch by one inch, arrived on the back of a large lorry in 20 foot lengths. I was quite surprised as I carried the lengths of steel up the drive how flexible they were. But had they have been fish bellied in the middle, larger in the middle than at the ends, they wouldn't have been quite so flexible, and that is the principle. If you take a look at a full size mill type steam engine, you will often see that these rods are also fish bellied, thicker in the middle than they are at each end. The drawing says I should start off at a quarter of an inch diameter, and in the middle, the fish belly should be five sixteenths of an inch in diameter. I've turned the entire rod to one imperial drill size above 5 sixteenths. Because by the time I clean up the tool marks, had I have turned the bar to 5 sixteenths, the dimension would be undersized. And now I've offset the top slide by two degrees. This will allow me to first of all cut a taper on this end. When I get to the middle, I can stop, move the tool to the other end, alter the rotation of the top slide for two degrees in the opposite direction. So, why two degrees? And what denomination are the degrees? Well, I think this is possibly a metric lathe, so maybe the degrees are metric degrees, I really don't know. There'll be 360 of them all the way around the top slide. Here's a top tip. Rotate the top slide one degree at a time, then you will eventually get the right taper. And also make sure that the early cuts are very fine indeed. Do you remember why I said that I'd turned the entire shaft to one imperial drill size above 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter? Well, here's the reason for that. I'm filing the centre section using a very coarse file so that it matches the tapers on both ends. 
A word of warning about filing in the lathe. Make sure you file as a handle, a substantial handle. It's very important. Also, roll up your sleeves. Make sure you don't have any loose clothing that could get caught up in the chuck. As I use the coarse file to speed up the removal of the material, the next part of the job involves using some very coarse emery cloth. This is 100 grit. What I'm trying to do is taper the centre part to match the tapers on each end. After the emery cloth, I use the file again. This time it's a fine file, so it's not scratching the surface quite as badly. And slowly but surely, this does take a long time by the way, you get the effect that you need. This time I'm using finer emery cloth. I'm using it dry and as you can see it's removing plenty of material. When I stop the lathe you can see there aren't too many deep lines but there are plenty of scratches and there's a fair way to go yet. The next part of the job involves using 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper and some oil. Changing the form of this 5 8 by half an inch bar took a long time, about two hours so far. As you can see, the 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper is really doing the job. The oil allows the sandpaper to cut much more freely. In this clip, I'm using a piece of Scotch Brite to further clean up the piece of metal. Once I stop the lathe, you can clearly see that this is starting to look like a mill engine connecting rod. The next episode will be nerve wracking as I finish the part. It's an accumulator. The more work you do at it, the sadder it becomes if you make a mess of it later on. But I'm not going to do that. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.